Good evening, everyone, and welcome in the Scientific Webinar AutoSTEM Automata to Teach STEM Subjects to Young Learners. Today with us, we have Joel Josephson, the Communications Officer of the project, and Oliver Thiel, the Project Coordinator of, of AutoSTEM. AutoSTEM is a project that uses multidisciplinary approaches that introduce STEM concepts and competencies in different subject areas at the same time, including measurement, transfer of power, mechanics, numbers, creativity, and comprehension. Joel, Oliver, thank you very much, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, first of all, can everybody hear us okay, please? No issues there? Just let us know in the, um, in the chat that you can hear us. And if you have any other problems or questions, please do let us know. Um, first of all, thank you very much to Eleni, who's put a lot into making this webinar happen and Scientix for being uh, such a great platform for uh, helping STEM teaching across the whole of Europe. And then finally, a big thank you for everybody for coming, because without you, be, Lollival and I would be talking to each other, which I'm afraid we've done before. It's not so exciting. So we're going to get straight into this and uh, see what we've got. Uh, Auto STEM is a very interesting project because it's multidisciplinarian and it's uh, funded in the Erasmus program in the KA201 uh, section which is large-scale projects that create innovative resources for all the schools of Europe. Um, we say all the schools of Europe because everything we produce is freely available so in fact it can be downloaded and used by anybody anywhere. That's the whole point of these projects. This particular project is focusing on new resources, innovative resources for students from four to eight years old. And we're using them to introduce basic ideas of STEM, uh, different areas of STEM. And Oliver will be following me and putting those into greater detail and explaining exactly how they work within the idea of using automata. Now, some of you may not be completely sure what automata are and what sort of work we're doing with them. So in a minute, we're just going to show you a video, not quite yet, in a minute or two. Um, and you'll get an idea of what we're actually doing there. Before I do that, I just want you to know who's involved in the project and who are the partners in the project. Uh, and they're listed there. And I'll just read them off. We have the University of Coimbra in Portugal, who are the coordinators of the project. Uh, Queen Maud University College in Trondheim in Norway, where um, uh, Oliver is a specialist teacher of kindergarten um, teachers. It's a, a, a teacher training institute. The 32nd uh, school in Sofia, Bulgaria, who are a very successful and interesting school in the middle of Sofia. Uh, Eureka uh, in Perugia in Italy, who are uh, a, a teacher, um, a, a, a ideas forum and bringing new ideas in education. And myself from the kinder site in the UK. And yes, we're still in the program, I'm very happy to say. Um, at this stage, I'd like everybody to have a quick look at what um, automata are. So Eleni, if you could please uh, show the video, that's okay. Thank you. 
Can we go back to the presentation, please? Uh, while we're waiting for the presentation to come back in, ah, that's good. Um, I'd just like to say that uh, the balloon boat that we can see Oliver launching here into a fjord in Norway has actually gone missing. So if anybody does actually find it, if they could please return it to the project, we'd be very grateful. Thank you. Um, the automata that we actually saw there are uh, different levels of sophistication and different ways of making them. Um, but they're all designed for young children. Now, in this project, um, we're making a number of different resources. And in fact, we've actually got more than we've listed here. And I'm going to go through those resources, which you can use and take uh, as you wish in greater detail after we tell you more about how the project works. Um, we've got a step-by-step -step teacher guide that is a full, gives the full theory and pedagogical, pedagogic concepts that we use within the, uh, within the project and why we're using automata and how they work and can be developed for learning of STEM. We've got about 12 or 14 different automata that we're using, which, um, hang on, I'll just go to the right page. Seem to have been jumps around. Uh, we have different automata that um, do teach different areas and are suitable for different age groups and for learning different areas of STEM. And each of those is detailed on the website with videos and documentation telling you how you can use those. Um, we're building up some scenarios on how you can implement multiple automata within different areas to bring up more ideas and more areas into uh, the use of them. Uh, for example, we have a, a bird, uh, a crocodile and an elephant. So we're making a jungle or a river scenario. So we could then bring ecology and other areas into that same learning area. Um, and finally, we have resources for planning and reflection. We are currently um, writing and building some an online course and an offline course, uh, which will you can use to um, teach yourself and understand further how to use the automata in your teaching. And finally, we're actually um, also writing some case studies, looking and examining and analyzing how we have found using these automata within workshops for teachers and with children and the feedback that we've gained, and we are passing on that information to you as well. I'd now like to hand over to Oliver, who um, will yes. tell you uh, all about the pedagogic my concepts. My colleague Jürgen, uh, who is an uh, artist, has designed this logo, and uh, it represents the four areas of STEM education, or STEM uh, research, or STEM. Uh, so STEM is an uh, abbreviation, uh, acronym for technology, uh, science, mathematics, and uh, engineering. And uh, I want to uh, go through those uh, four areas uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about uh, what, how the, the automata, automata are related to it. So technology, uh, usually we think uh, when we hear technology nowadays about uh, digital technology, but technology begins uh, much earlier in much simpler technology and all tools and machines are a kind of technology. So automata, each to automaton in itself is uh, a kind of technology because it is a simple machine uh, that does something and that is so we have a very wide uh, understanding of the uh, term uh, automata so every uh, toy that has some moving parts uh, is uh, uh, automata and in addition we have tools uh, or the children use tools when uh, making the automata. The next area is mathematics. 
and when it comes to mathematics uh, we use Alan Bishop's theory uh, about the six fundamental mathematical activities and the automata are related to all six and here you can see that it's different uh, designing is about uh, geometry it's about shapes and here related to uh, the toys it is to design uh, uh, automaton there you need to think about which shapes do I need to uh, create this toy that I am thinking about and when the children are making their own automata they experience a lot of different shapes uh, for example we have a bird that has uh, a round body that is like an ellipse and the wings are rectangles and then we have the crocodile with a scissor uh, mechanism and uh, it is made out of rectangles and the next um, area our activity is locating and that is about spatial awareness spatial relationships because the different parts that have different shapes have to be arranged uh, in a certain order and in a uh, special uh, relation, a uh, spatial relationship to each other, in order to make the uh, toy function. And then we have counting because often the children have to count how many of this part do I need to build uh, the automaton. And measuring um, is uh, because we need parts of certain lengths uh, or widths width, um, so that the children have to measure a lot uh, or make experience have experiences measuring while uh, building the automata and as well when playing with the automata for example we have a catapult and then you can have uh, activities where you shoot something and then the children can measure how long distance uh, was uh, and line. And everything is about playing. Um, so playing is in fact a mathematical activity because uh, a lot of creativity and as well as strategical thinking is involved in playing. And finally explaining and that is to talk with the children about how the, uh, how the machine the toy is uh, working how can we understand that when you do something on this end of the machine that something else is happening and you have different kinds of machine. Uh, here we have an example, uh, the crocodile or the dinosaur. And here you can see the shapes of the rectangles and that the rectangles are arranged in a specific pattern. Uh, all those that go in one direction are above and the others going in the other direction are below uh, and you have the uh, revolving uh, turning motion and then when you uh, uh, turn it apart on the one end then it goes uh, apart on the other hand but it, in the same way change it its, le its length. So a lot of things that the uh, children can uh, explore here. And mathematics is uh, as well related to the science uh, and there we have the different sciences. Uh, physics of course, uh, there is a lot of mechanics uh, involved in making the automata. Um, and as uh, Joel has already said, we have well, the biology, uh, but here first uh, some examples. So we have different kind of motors, different kind of uh, power sources, uh, like the rubber band motor, for example, or the uh, air balloon, where the pressure uh, gives the thrust uh, to move the toy uh, forward. You have already seen the drawbridge uh, that you have to power by yourself, or the children have to power. Uh, by turning the handle. Um, 
but the turning motion can we uh, as well uh, make here with a wind turbine uh, for different power sources and that is science of course and physics and energy and uh, as uh, Joel already told you biology because um, many of our toys are representing animals for example birds and crocodiles uh, and you can use this uh, to teach uh, biology and zoology and uh, and here you can see uh, some examples of those so, so the bird you see the bird here and the butterfly and uh, the elephant it's a very simple mechanism that uh, and it is opening them and shutting them And we have uh, automata for all e e age groups. Uh, so the, the the elephant is for uh, very young children because it has a simple mechanism, and uh, the bird is for um, maybe four or five year olds, and and then we have uh, the catapult that is maybe um, for older children. And uh, yeah, geology is here another science that we can work. Uh, this uh, and finally we have engineering uh, and engineering is uh, about so science is about uh, explaining how the world works how the uh, laws of nature are working but engineering is about developing something new and uh, that is one of our aims as well not only that the children make and play with automata but that they got their get their own ideas and develop their own ideas and maybe create their own toys uh, and uh, here are some examples not made by the children but made by the teachers uh, that show that the scissor arm mechanism that we use for the crocodile and the dinosaur that can be used for many different things and teachers have been very creative and uh, we have evaluated our uh, workshops with the teachers uh, so that is results from the teachers we have um, as well observations with children but that uh, will be uh, the topic in a different workshop uh, in a a different webinar. So here we are focusing on uh, what uh, the teachers think about the workshop and uh, they all agreed that uh, children's play is important and uh, play with automata and that it can be motivating for the children. That is it facilitates the children's creativity and creativity and wonder and wonder uh, plays an important role in, in the sciences uh, to wonder about how things are related to each other and how things work. Uh, the teachers liked very much that our workshop is uh, interdisciplinary, so that all the different disciplines, all the different subjects work together. So not only the STEM subjects, uh, that is interdisciplinary already, in itself but as well the arts and language will, uh, is, uh, has an important role because it requires working with other talk with the children and the children will learn new terms uh, new concepts and new words um, but the teachers said as well that uh, there is a lot of time needed to work with this so if you have a very strict schedule or like some schools have that might be a problem so you have to take the time to make a project and um, I will encourage you to say that it is not wasted time uh, it is very good invested time uh, because um, the children have so many different and varied uh, experience with different subjects and um, so they will learn much better than when you when you talk talk with a subject uh, for itself. 
So you have to provide enough time, time for building the automata, time uh, that the children need to explore how the mechanism works, and time to test and play with the toys. And all those activities are learning activities. All those experiences that the children have uh, when they do those activities uh, are important for their education and um, I uh, am working with kindergarten teachers or preschool teachers and that is uh, in Norway not only the five-year-olds but uh, from birth to uh, six-year-olds uh, so our focus uh, target group is four to eight years um, but we have uh, as well, some experiences or my students have uh, tried out some other with even younger children. Uh, and when you think about the elephant or the bird, uh, that you can do with even younger children. And uh, the good thing about the kindergarten or the preschool is that you often do not have a strict uh, curriculum or schedule and do you have much more possibilities you can work in projects, more usually work in projects. And another thing that the student said that uh, there should be not too many children in one group. So it might be difficult to do it in a class with, with 30 children. But in kindergarten you often work in small groups, about five, six children. That uh, will be very good. We gave uh, as well a questionnaire to the teachers and the students and uh, that is from the IME um, and we use two scales, one about the usefulness and value of the activities and one about uh, the teachers' interest and joy. Uh, so that is not the young children that answer those questionnaires but the students are still the teachers and uh, it shows that we got only positive responses. So, so you have a, a range from one to seven uh, and uh, the minimum uh, was four, so that is on the positive side so all, uh, of our attendance. Uh, all of the teacher students that have participated in this one workshop that we evaluated uh, liked uh, the activities very good so uh, evaluated as activities as useful uh, and great value for the children okay now it's your turn again john I have to remember to unmute my microphone before I start speaking. Thank you very much, Oliver. That was great. I wish I could do that. Um, what we've got here is a list of the different automata that we're actually using at the moment in the project. And uh, each of those items can actually be clicked on and you will go to the page. Um, but let's not go into that clicky thing yet because I'd like to run through resources that we've actually made for you. Um, so I'm going to go to the next page. When you click on any one of those links, you'll find a page on the website and that's broken up so you can evaluate what that particular automata is going to be teaching you and how you can deal with it and make it and what resources we've got for you to help you use that item with, it, with your children. And the website page is broken up into what areas of STEM learning that particular automata can be used for. There's a video on how to make that automata. There's a full teacher's step-by-step -step guide for that particular automata. And we're going to have a look at that in much greater detail in a moment. We're going to look at a real one. 
Um, where we have it, we have media examples, videos, and um, and photos of children making those automata, and you can get a feel for how they've been used and what sort of engagement you can have with those children. Uh, where appropriate, we have templates that you can print off. So the one we're actually looking at at the moment online here is the jelly bird, what we call the jelly bird, which is the flapping bird. It's flapping. Yeah. And um, you can see you can download and print these off on a standard uh, computer printer, and then you just give those to the children. And the instructions that you'll find in the teacher's step-by-step -step guide will tell you how to use that and implement that with your children. Now, the next page, we're going to act. Right, I can see what you've done. Uh, and then it seems to have changed this. So, uh, Eleni, can you please put up the PDF for this one? For the step-by-step uh, -step guide. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Let's check I can run up and down that. Okay, so as I said, when you go into the website, the web page, you'll find that every item that we have there has a template, a, a document like this with the same structure which will help you understand how you can use that particular automata and um, how to make it and how what materials you'll use, what tools you'll need. So we're going to go through this one in some depth. If you go to look at any of the other automata, you will find the same structure there for you as well. Um, the guide has basically two parts, as it says, how you can introduce the STEM ideas, in this case, mathematical concepts, and then how to construct that particular jelly bird, uh, that particular automata. Um, so we've also got some additional information here on how you can actually take the jelly bird, this particular automata, a little bit further and make it uh, uh, um, bring further ideas and concepts into your classroom. So here we talk about how flocks of birds fly together because the children can make these flocks of birds with their own jelly birds and copy how this happens and do it like this. Of course, all the automata can go home uh, very easily. And uh, in this case, if a child was given a bedtime story featuring a bird, this would be a very nice way to bring the jelly bird into the story, be part of that story. And we give an example of a book where um, a freely available story where the jelly bird could be used within that concept. Again, it brings the school, the child, the parents and their whole life into this learning experience. Um, we can change the wing shapes. Oliver mentioned earlier that the wings on the jelly bird that we have are oblongs, and we do that specifically because we want to talk about that shape. But additionally, they can be made into different areas. Let's say you're working on more advanced shapes, geometric shapes, you could change the shape of the wings in the same way and bring that in. So here you can see how you could use this in the areas that we're talking about. And again, Oliver mentioned some of these points about the body being round, but it's not a circle. And the jelly bird, uh, I should mention, the jelly bird is designed for the youngest children, so four, five, six-year-olds, just about maybe. These are the very basic concepts you can be talking about. I'm not going to read them all out. You, you can do that yourself, I'm sure. You can download this or from the website. Um, it tells you exactly how that can be used. And just below here, we actually go through how you can use that as the children. It is important that the children, and you can see in the photo just below, it's the children who are making the actual bird, the automata in this case. Again, that's a very important part. But as they're making it, the teacher talks with the, con with the children about the various mathematical concepts that can be brought in with this particular automata. And it's the same with all the automata, how we can bring those mathematical, engineering, mechanical, physical concepts into, um, the, into the conversation 
as as you're teaching. I, I did a workshop for some slightly older children where we were making the first automometer we saw in the video, uh, the balloon car. And we got into about conservation of energy and where the energy comes from that caused the car to move. You know, right, going from, well, you ate food, so you have air to blow into the balloon and the balloon, et cetera, et cetera, and where that energy came from. So all sorts of co uh, conversations can be started in these because you're using mechanical forces in all various ways and various ideas at the same time. Um, and here, as I say, you can see specific areas that you can bring into the conversation as the children are making that automata. And again, this is why you need that time element to for the children to take in those concepts and have that conversation and make the actual jelly bird at time at the same time. And there we have children busy making and playing with their toys that they've now made. Um, in this part of the uh, PDF, they're all PDFs that you can download, you can see that we um, show the tools that you're going to need and it's all very standard stuff, the standard computer printer, um, paper, colored paper, A4 card, scissors, glue stick, uh, food packaging and colored coloring materials, everything that we normally have in the school. And we just have a link to the templates that you need to print for each child would need two pieces of paper for that. Again, we have a link to the video that was shown on the website previously, so you can go and run through that so you can understand the construction, perhaps try out that construction before you do it with the children. And then a step-by-step -step numbered guide how you actually go through and make the particular automata that you're looking at. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how deep and com I hope complete um, the instructions we're putting together with the actual each automata. And as I say, and as we've said, these are starting points. You can take this much further as well. Um, please, can we go back to the um, slideshow, Eleni, please? Thank you very much. OK. Um, so Eleni has got the link to, thank you, uh, has got the link to the um, step, teacher step-by-step -step guide, which is also on the resource page of the site. This is what I've just described already when we spoke, we went through the PDF. I'm just going to run back to the list of automata. So these are ones that you could actually click on now and give some, get some ideas. I also want to just explain again about the online course that we're currently constructing. And as I'm sure you're all aware, the project obviously has run into time problems because of what's been happening with the COVID-19 uh, virus that has meant that the progress of the project is not on, um, not on schedule, which is I'm sure everybody can understand. This is an international project. We are no longer at the, at the moment. We can't even meet. But we have actually managed to continue online. Um, we are making, as I say, an online course that's actually in construction, construction at the moment. And that will go through all these different uh, automata so you can see exactly how they can be used in what area for what age group and the multiple uses you can actually use them for. So, for example, something like the catapult, which you can see just halfway down there. I don't know if this will show up. No, it doesn't. Um, that can be used from very young children for very basic um, measuring and counting to quite complicated maths with averages and means and furthest, shortest and other ideas as well. Um, and many of them can also have these different areas that can be brought in. Um, that actually takes us to the end of the um, of our part of the webinar, this part of it. 
I do want to say that it's very important, I don't know if we brought this out enough uh, while we've been speaking, that the automata work extremely well as a motivating tool for children and as a way of introducing concepts that may be quite difficult because there's a very huge motivational aspect and a fun aspect. And it's very important, as Oliver said, and he's the expert, um, that the children have time to play with what they make. And there's a lot of play and a lot of interesting play that can, it can be used. For example, when I did the balloon car with some children, we then started having races and who could go the furthest. And there's many ideas that, again, that's all mathematics or different areas of uh, physics are being brought in um, in that play that can be explored as well. On this play uh, page here, you can see the links to the website, to our YouTube channel, um, to Facebook. We have a Facebook, excuse me, Facebook page where we are updating it very regularly with news and what is happening in the project. And you can see where we're going and where it's moving on. Um, so thank you very much. Now, we'd be very happy to answer any questions if you would like to write them into the chat, please. Ah, there's an interesting question. Uh, Marcia asked, do you think this activity yes. can be done even remotely um, in online well, teaching? I think that's very relevant today. Um, Oliver, do you want to, I've okay, spoken a lot yeah. now. Do, do you want to answer that one? But with uh, six, seven, eight years old, I, I think we have not tried it. We tried it with uh, adults um, uh, to teach this remotely. Uh, we uh, soon, and that worked. Um, and one uh, important aspect of this is that you do not need expensive materials. Uh, Many of our toys are made from recycled materials, from uh, reused uh, materials. Um, so when you tell your uh, students, uh, the children, what kind of things they need, uh, for example, the, the milk carton for the boat, um, then they can collect those things and, and then you can show them we are uh, soon uh, via the internet how to assemble it and, and, and they can do it by themselves. Um, if they are, uh, if their motorical abilities are uh, good enough to, to make it on their own or if they have a parent, for example, that can help them. But uh, as I said, they, we have very different kinds of automata and some are more advanced and need uh, more advanced skills, and some are very easy to make, to make um, and the easy ones where the children do not need help and uh, older, I think it should be possible. Worth trying. Yes, do, I have, do you have more questions? Sorry, are we back to me? Okay. Uh, yes, th there's actually a very interesting question here from Gamzi. I hope I said that correctly. Uh, please excuse me if I didn't. And he put quite a long question, and I'm going to read it out for everybody. Um, I've just got to find the video. He said, um, he asked, would the use of, for older students, would the use of ready-made patterns hinder their creativity? For example, while speaking about force topic, I observe when I give students only straw sticks and a certain amount of cardboard and tape to find a solution to a specific problem, I, then I they can make uh, many different children. ideas and answers to that and be very creative in it. So again, I know, I know Oliver, you're specifically with younger children. children. Do yes, you want to just... Um, they learn much more when they have to solve problems, when you just introduce a concept or maybe even with the young children, we show them 
there are the toy, the automaton, and show how it works, and they try it, and then they try to figure out how the mechanism works and, and try to rebuild it. And then, when we observe as a teacher that the child needs help and needs some hints and some scaffolding for uh, to find a solution, then we can do this. But in the first place, it's uh, the child's own problem solving that is uh, uh, that has the largest effect, and uh, for sure with all of this. That we will really. Okay. Oliver, so, so I can't, couldn't quite hear the very end. Did you finish there? Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, okay. Thank you very much, Oliver. Um, I don't know if there's any more questions, and I've missed anybody. I hope I haven't. Um, maybe there was something earlier. If there was an earlier question, please do poke it down to the bottom again so I can easily see it. Um, one of the things I'd be very grateful for, um, and thank you for your very positive uh, comments and feedback on this, and please do understand that Oliver and I are only two members of the team of uh, five from five different institutions who are actually working on this, so it's not all of us. <laughs> I don't want to take credit for everything. <laughs> um, and thank you for your interest in this. Um, It'd be very helpful to the project and because we're always uh, very much evaluating what we're doing and trying to get feedback, that if you do try these, particularly if you try them in an online setting, and remember the whole concept is that you can download and work remotely from the website, that we don't have to give you immediate feedback uh, all the time. It's very helpful for us, for us, though, as a project, if you actually write to us and tell us, so give us some feedback of how it worked. Um, my email address is there on the site at the moment. You can see it, joel at kindersite.info. Please do use that as a link if you need, if you can't find another link. Um, but it's very important to us that we, we, we get your feedback. Um, when you look at the individual automata, that list, you will find a lot of interesting information. For example, on the Jellybird, uh, though the children can download the templates and print off their, own, their templates themselves, and you could quite easily run that online, but as um, Oliver says, not with the youngest children perhaps, because they'll need some more scaffolding. Perhaps you won't be able to supply. Okay, is there any further questions? for us. And I just like to mention that as uh, Elena has put in now a couple of times, important um, that you share your feedback on this webinar uh, through the survey that is online and the links are there in the chat at the moment for you to see. So please do do that. It does help everybody to know how we're going and what we're doing with, with, with our work and with Science6's work as well. So. That's, that's an important point. Uh, but apart from that, thank you so I much, think, Joel uh, and done, Oliver. Oliver. It was an, an amazing webinar. Thank other you so much for sharing questions. your expertise, your resources, the materials, and many, many thanks to all our participants. Okay. So. Uh, so I'll just do the last thank you, which is to Eleni and Scientix for letting us uh, do this presentation. And then, of course, to everybody who's come to see this. I hope you found it valuable, and we look forward to your feedback and involvement in our project. Thank you very much, and have a good day, evening, whatever.